Radical expressions. Radical expressions are expressions that contain a radical sign. So a radical sign is the square root sign. Here we have some examples of radical expressions. We have the square root of 14, the square root of L squared plus W squared, the square root of 2 times G times D, the square root of D over 4, 5 times the square root of 2, and the square root of 18. These are all examples of radical expressions. A radicand is the actual radical sign, the actual square root sign. So the radicand can, may contain numbers, variables, or both, and it may also contain one term or more than one term. So notice um, this radical expression has numbers, variables, and it contains um, one term, where this radical expression has variables and exponents, and it contains two terms, two different situations. In this box here, the simplest form of a square root expression, an expression containing square roots, is in simplest form when the radicand has no perfect square factors other than one, the radicand has no fractions, and there are no square roots in any denominator. So this is meaning the simplest form of a square root expression. So making sure all of these steps are um, have occurred means that the radical expression is in simplest form. Here we have examples of simp simplified square root expressions. When we have the square root of 2, um, that becomes the absolute value of x. Remember, it's got to be absolute value because it's always got to be positive. You can't have negative under square root. Here we have x to the third, so that would be um, x times the square root of x. x. The square root of x to the fourth becomes x squared. The square root of x to the fifth is x squared times square root of x, and the square root of x to the sixth becomes the absolute value of x to the third power. So these are simplified square root expressions. So we're actually going to be doing some examples where we're simplifying these expressions. So for a here, we have the square root of 256 over 4. So the first step is we just divide. 256 divided by 4 gives me the square root of 50, I'm sorry, square root of 64, which the square root of 64 is 8. So that would be my final answer. You do need to show the steps and show your work when you're solving this in the book work. The next one, we have the square root of 40 plus 9. You first add that together. 40 plus 9 is 49. So you have the square root of 49, which gives you an answer of 7. Final answer. The next one, we have the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared. 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144. Now you add them together to get the square root of 169. The square root of 169 is 13. It's very important to show your work. The next one here we have the square root of 3 minus x, all that squared. Well, remember when you um, take when this is squared and you take the square root of it, it just leaves you left with what's in the radicand signs here. So you just bring down the values that's under the radical. So you have just square root, I'm sorry, not square root, but the absolute value of x minus 3. Remember when you square something, to unsquare it, you take the square root and you just would bring that down. There are a few properties in this section. The first one is the product property of square roots. So product means that you are multiplying and getting the answer. The word expression of this is for any non-negative real numbers a and b, the square root of a times b is equal to the square root of a times the square root of b. So here we have it in the number form and the algebra form of it. The number form, you might see something like the square root of 4 times 25. Well, what's 4 times 25? That's the square root of 100. And you can break that down. Square root of 100 is 10. So notice what they did here, too, is take the square root. Another way to look at this is you take the square root of 4, square root of 25. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 25 is 5. 
to get 10. So these are two different ways you can solve um, the product property of square roots. The algebra form is square root of a times b, so you take the square root of a times the square root of b, where a is greater than or equal to 0 and b is greater than or equal to 0. Let's look at two examples working with the product property of square roots, and then we're going to simplify it all. N make note that all your variables represent a non-negative number. So the square root of 128, well we have to think of what two factors give you 128. When you factor out 128, factor the radicand using perfect squares. So think what two perfect numbers create 128. Well 2 times 64 gives you 128 and both of these are perfect square numbers. So the way you think of this is the square root of 64 times the square root of 2. The square root of 64 is 8. Then you, you would just leave the square root of 2 under the radical sign. So the final answer when we simplify this down is going to be 8 times the square root of 2. You do not get a whole number value when you take the square root of 2, so you just leave that under the radical sign. The next one here we have the square root of x to the third times y squared. So when we break that down, it's x to the third times y to the second. Then what we're going to do is x to the third, would, when we break that apart, it's going to be x squared times, I'm sorry, square root of x squared times the square root of x. And then um, y squared would be the square root of y squared. So we use the product property of square roots. So when we look at this, we have um, square root of x squared, square root of y squared, you bring that out to get x times y times what's ever left, which is the square root of x. Remember, when you have square root of x squared, that means x times x, so you just bring that out since um, you have that x squared. So here's my final answer, x times y times the square root of x, since y is non-negative, x to the second power equals, I'm sorry, y to the second power equals y. You'll also see what's called the quotient property of square roots. Quotient property of square roots is for any real number a and b, a is greater than or equal to zero, and b is greater than zero. The square root of a divided by b is equal to the square root of a divided by the square root of b. So here we have the square root of 36 divided by 4. Well, 36 divided by 4 gives you 9, so you have the square root of 9 equals 3. Or another way to look at that is take the square root of 36, which is 6, taking the square root of 4, which is 2, and dividing to get the same value, 3. These are two, two different ways to solve using the quotient property of square roots. The algebra form is the square root of a divided by b is the square root of a divided by the square root of b, where a is greater than or equal to 0, and b is greater than 0. So let's solve some solutions here using the quotient property of square roots. So here we have the square root of 12 over 27. So we can break that into, notice we can simplify this down. When you divide both the numerator and the denominator by 3. That's going to give you 12 divided by 3 is 4 over 27 divided by 3 is 9. So when we break that apart and simplify it, it's the square root of 4 ninths. That's how they got that. And then we can break it down more by using the quotient property of square roots. So you take the square root of 9, I'm sorry, the square root of 4 over the square root of 9 which simplifies to two-thirds, and this would be my answer. Looking at b, we have the square root of y to the sixth over four. So when I simplify this, break this apart, we're going to use the quotient property of square roots, so we take the square root of y to the sixth over the square root of four. When we take the square root of y to the sixth, we break that down when we divide um, 6 divided by 2, you get y to the third times y to the third over square root of 4 is 2 times 2, so square root of 2. So when we break that apart, it's going to be y to the third over 2, and this is my simplified version of that.
Whoops. So here's my answer. Y to the third over two. Example four here, it says simplify these situations down. So we first have the square root of 20 over 49. So we can work with the um, quotient property of square roots. So we take the square root of 20 over the square root of 49. When we break this apart, 20 is 4 times 5. So the square root of 4 times 5 over the square root of 49. The square root of 4 is 2. When you take the square root of 5, that's going to give you um, a decimal. So notice how they broke it apart even further. You take the square root of 4 times the square root of 5 over the square root of 49, which simplifies to 2 times the square root of 5 over 7. Square root of 4 is going to give me 2. Square root of 5 gives me a decimal, so leave the 5 under the radical sign over square root of 49 gives me 7. That's how they got this. So 2 times the square root of 5 over 7 is my final answer. Looking at the next one, we have z to the fifth, square root of z to the fifth, over 25y to the second power. So when we break that apart, you set each situation under the radical sign. Now z to the fifth is going to be broken into z to the fourth times z. Remember always when you're breaking this down, you're factoring out using a perfect square number. 4 is a perfect square number, z to the first, 4 plus 1 gives me z to the fifth. So that's how they got that. Over 25y squared, when I break that apart, z to the fourth, square root of z to the fourth, times square root of z over square root of 25y to the second. So square root of z to the fourth is going to give me z squared. Bring that out of the radical sign. Times the square root of z over the square root of 25y to the second just breaks it down to 5y. So z squared times square root of z over 5y is my answer for b. The last one we have p to the sixth, square root of p to the sixth over q to the tenth. When we break that down, when we simplify that, um, think of what two numbers would go into 6 and 10. Well, if you think about this, 6 divided by 2 and 10 divided by 2. 6 divided by 2 gives me 3, so that's p to the third. 10 divided by 2 gives me 5, so we get p to the third over q to the fifth. And this is going to be the simplified version of example C.